Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Elle. I'm a painter and a printmaker, and this is a video series where we go through and talk about some of the finer details of printmaking. In this video, I'm going to be talking about inks and modifiers and mixing the right consistency of ink in order to hand press your blocks. Hand pressing is a, definitely a skill. It took me a while to learn it, and it's, at the moment, the method that I use, I would say 95% of the time. It's really a good skill to add to your toolbox. That being said, this is going to be a two-part video with the first part talking about inks and how to mix them, and then the second part being actually how to press the block by hand. So let's get into it. These are the inks that I use currently. These are Cranfield Traditional Relief inks. I tend to buy them in these tubes and they come in a whole bunch of different colors. I've tried a couple of different relief inks, both water-based and oil-based. These are my favorite so far. I have a set of these Gamblin pots. These are really popular. I like these fine. The problem that I have with them is that they come with a little, a little rubber band that goes around here to seal the lid on. As you can see, I've lost mine. And if you open this up, you can see this whole top layer of ink has dried out. That's okay. This is fine that this happens. You can see that there's fresh ink underneath there. If I scrape this top layer off, there's, there's fresh ink under there, but I haven't done that because I don't know where the rubber band is and I don't want to ruin the rest of the pot. Both of these are oil-based. I know a lot of people don't like using oil-based inks and I understand it's messy and it's smelly, but as far as evenness of pressing and a consistent color and coat, I really haven't had much success with the water-based inks. I really recommend going with the oil-based inks if you can. I know that some people are really sensitive to these smells and these chemicals, in which case definitely stick with the water-based, but if you can, I really recommend oil-based inks. I have a couple of modifiers here that I use in order to prepare my ink. Each tube and each pot, they come out different, and so you need to have a couple of modifiers in order to get that ink the right consistency every time. What I use is a combination of tack reducer, transparent extender, and then this burnt plate oil. Most of these modifiers work to loosen the ink. I find that just about every tube or pot of ink that I get comes out too stiff to hand press. So I really lean heavily on loosening my ink in order to get the right consistency. The exception is this transparent extender, which beefs up your ink so that you don't have to use as much of it when you're pressing. I'm gonna walk you through what I do in order to mix my ink, and hopefully that'll clear some things up as we go. So obviously I start with my ink, get a little bit on your palette, the next thing I do is I add my transparent extender. Like I said, this beefs up your ink supply. So it doesn't alter the consistency of the ink at all. It doesn't change the opacity. It doesn't change the way the ink flows, or at least it shouldn't. If you have a really loose ink, it might stiffen it up a little bit or vice versa. If you have a really stiff ink, it might loosen it up a bit, but it should be right about the same consistency as ink. I tend to put just less than a one-to-one -one ratio. Don't go more than one-to-one -one or else you might see some opacity issues. And mix those guys together. You can use the transparent extender with any color as well, I should mention. It's not just for the black ink. All right, once that's nice and mixed in, we should check to see where we're at as far as stiffness. In order to do that, I grab some ink on my palette knife and see how it runs off the knife. Right now it's not moving at all, so we know it's too stiff. What we're looking for is kind of a nice, steady, syrupy drip. What I will do next is I'm gonna add a little bit of this burnt plate oil. Burnt plate oil is actually the medium that binds the ink pigments. What that means is these inks, they're a mixture of burnt plate oil and pigment. So in this case, it's a black pigment and an oil. So by adding more oil, we loosen up the ink take just a little bit of this. I use the end of a paintbrush and just put a few drops in. A little goes a long way. So start small and add more as you see fit. You're mixing that in and checking again. Still a little too stiff. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. For hand pressing blocks, you really want the ink to be nice and loose. The stiffer it is, the more pressure you need which is really tough on your hands. It took me a while to figure out the right consistency, but once you do, hand pressing isn't so bad. The consistency that you want is also dependent on the block that you are printing. For a small block with really tight details, you would want something a little bit stiffer. If you have large areas of black, I would recommend having a little bit of a looser ink. 
This is probably okay for the block that I'm going to be pressing in the second part of this video. It's smaller, it's got some intense details, and I want those to show up when I print. Because the block is smaller, I'd rather err on the side of the ink being too stiff than too loose in this case. The last modifier that I have here is this tack reducer. What this does is it relaxes the ink so it sits nicer on the paper. If you're not getting an even spread, if you're pressing a block and it's coming up with little white dots in it, this tack reducer will allow the ink to relax onto the block so that when you put the paper on it, it doesn't peak and create those white stipples. I'm just gonna put a little bit into this pile that I have here. I'm not too concerned about the stippling for this block. That issue can be more pronounced with certain types of papers. It's just trial and error. The tack reducer will also loosen the ink a little bit. I don't know if you can see how it's changed. It's very creamy. See how it's falling off now? That's what we want. A nice, slow, syrupy drip. This black ink comes out a little bit stiffer than some of the other colors. I pulled this gold ink this is one that comes out very, very loose. See, it basically is already that kind of syrupy, buttery consistency that we want. When I use this gold ink, I don't really put any modifiers in it at all. It's already really loose. It's a little tough to see with the small amount, but I didn't wanna waste anything. Just keep in mind when you put the ink on your palette, what it looks like and what you're trying to get it to look like, and then just work towards that. Now that I've got this black ink ready to print, I'm just going to move this into a small pile. And then I wanted to talk very briefly about cleanup because that's always the biggest issue when it comes to these oil-based inks. You can use mineral spirits. I have some in this little jar. I'm an oil painter, so I just tend to have little dribs and drafts of mineral spirits lying around. And this stuff is sort of the gold standard for cleanup. It's very easy, it's very quick. The problem is it smells very bad and a lot of people are very sensitive to it. So this might not be an option for you. When it comes to cleanup, you can also use vegetable oil. I'm just gonna show you really quick. Because the oil is the binder of these inks, like I said, it loosens it enough that it'll come right off. If you can get most of this off with the paint scraper, then the cleanup is a lot easier. So that's really it for inks and modifiers and how to mix the right consistency. There are other modifiers out there that you can use. One of them is called magnesium carbonate and that will stiffen your ink back up. I believe all these different ink makers make their own modifiers. You can mix and match as long as you're using oil-based inks, they'll all go together. So if you have any questions about any of this, make sure you leave them down below in the comments. If you're interested in learning how to press the block once we have the ink mixed, make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, turn on the little bell notification and you'll be notified when that next video goes live. And if you have any suggestions about future videos you'd like to see me do, make sure you leave those in the comments below. I believe that's about it for today. I hope you guys have a nice rest of your week and I'll see you next time.